Despite what their moms told them, they just aren't talented enough for radio. Unfortunately, anyone can have a show these days. Sean. Well, I'm pretty hard to figure out sometimes. I can't even figure myself out sometimes, so don't you try to. Joe. You're an idiot. And really, a disloyal person. This is the Cuse Militia. Those two unapologetically biased, orange-blooded homers, Sean and Joe. It's the most bullshit thing I've seen in 30 years. Welcome, orange men and ladies. Happy Thursday. This is the Cuse Militia with Sean and Joe. At Cuse Militia on the socials. Go there. Join the militia. Rate, review, subscribe, especially on iTunes. We appreciate all of you who have done so already. Boy, what a sh show yesterday was. Mm. What an absolute shit show. And then Syracuse played. The Orange go from showtime to blow time, collapsing against Pitt, losing their ACC home opener. 63-60, to 60, you'll hear from us. We'll hear from you and fan feedback. And Syracuse is set for a primetime matchup against 3-7 and seven Georgetown this Saturday in the Dome. We'll let you know what we think about that. We have your 2021 predictions that I uh, went on the socials and asked for. I'll maybe shuffle through some of those and cut some of the regular fan feedback from the game short as it is much of the same. Uh, Also, the net rankings are out, so we'll be updating those from here on out. Syracuse currently sits 34th in those after the loss to Pitt. Pitt is 64th in those with their win in the net. So we have... Those to look forward to, watching and bouncing back and forth on all of that. And we got the quad breakdowns we're going to be talking about when needed. So, anyway, you know, yep. it's that time of year when that stuff starts to matter. And maybe one of these seasons, we're going to get here and we're going to say, you know, we'll talk about the quads and all this stuff and net rankings. But it's not, it doesn't matter because Syracuse is solid. So, yeah. We won't have Maybe to one count day. our net ranking record. But uh, anyway, Jawar Jordan, he's going to enter the transfer portal. He became a starting running back in 2020 after Abdul Adams and Jarvion Howard opted out. He, he was struggling in his first three starts. He totaled 72 yards, ended up suffering an injury against Georgia Tech, and then we didn't see him again. Well, he's going to enter the transfer portal, so we wish him the best of luck. Obviously, we don't know what the running back position looks like in 2021, but obviously with Sean Tucker um, kind of having a breakout year, not kind of, having a breakout year, you know that maybe Jawar Jordan doesn't have a place or doesn't see himself having a place or whatever. So, oh, yeah. Anyway. And Cooper Lutz, he kind of shined a little bit too in the small That's little, true. you know, yeah. just getting him that experience. And with uh, Josh Huff coming in, and, you know, I know that we're still waiting to see what's up with Abdul Adams and Jarvion Howard. But again, I think this is another situation where, um, you know, the uh, transfer portal is in play. Um, there's a lot of, a lot of players out there from, Big, big schools and even smaller schools and that players, you know, have overachieved and want to go play in in better competition. So um, if it comes down to it, I think we might have to go that route. I'd like to hear some kind of news. I think it's crazy to me that we still have not heard at all from Jarvion Howard and Abdul Adams. And maybe not personally, but just some type of news, right? Something, social media, something, anything. I don't know. It's weird. It's right, but everything you hear now or you read now, they talk about you know basically yeah, people are assuming that they're that they're gone. Yeah, I but know, again, but you would think if there they were been you, any, there's been no news. If, right, if they were gone, you would expect to have heard that by now. I mean, they, we went all year with this, so right. I, you know, I don't know. We didn't hear from them since training, since spring training, since training camp or whatever. So yeah. And pretty much, yeah, it's a little weird, I must say. So, but with yeah. with the departure of Jawar Jordan, you kind of think that. I mean, you're optimistic about them staying, but we'll see. So, yeah, anyways. and again, uh, just I mean, seeing what Sean Tucker and everything. Uh, I mean, Jawar Jordan with an injury, and you don't know really where his head's at. Um, but again, uh, it's not that I want to say that it's like a worrying thing. It's just you know. I mean, we really didn't get to see what he 
what he had. I mean, he, I know he had some good plays as true freshman year, and this year he pretty much was lower lower leg injury the, like the first or second game. So, um, and good luck to him. Uh, I like what Sean Tucker and some of the other guys have, but again, we need to be more than three or four deep at running back. So, we're gonna have to see something here. Yeah, we obviously. So we Sh- will shortly. Yeah, you would hope. As soon as we know, you'll know. Let's take a listen to what Coach had to say after the loss to Pitt yesterday afternoon. We uh, obviously we depend a lot on shooting. We start off the game making shots. We got the same shots the whole game, but we just you know we didn't make them. Where our defense was about you know pretty good, solid, um, you know. But we we depend on making jump shots, and we haven't really made them. And uh, since we took the first break and then the second break and now this break, um, we just, you know, other than Robert, you know, we're about five or six out of 33. And uh, Robert saved us for there for a while, but, you know, we're just not, uh, obviously, we're, we shoot six, seven, whatever, for 38, we're not going to win games. I think also... Uh, you know, we thought Barama would play, but his, it was sore. Knee was sore. He practiced five or six days in a row, but his knee was sore, so he couldn't go today. Yeah, they got they got us on the boards in the second half a little bit, but you know that's part of it. Quincy being out, he's our best rebounder. Um, yeah, that I mean that hurts us for sure. And the other thing, it's shots. You know, Kadari has got to understand they're leaving him open. They're they're saying, get off him, get off him. They're leaving him open from the three-point line. And, uh, you know, he's got to drive and make plays in those situations, which he did after the first couple. But, you know, he, he needs to see that. He's not making those shots in practice yet. So he's got to be able to drive. But, yeah, I mean, the boards is a problem for us anyway. Uh, but, uh, you know, we're small. When Quincy out... You know, we're unbelievably thin and small. Woody, Woody hasn't practiced, and Robert has, so I was going to go with Robert anyway. And then they were in the zone situation, and, you know, he can shoot. We, we know he can shoot, and, uh, you know, he knocked down some shots. We know he's a good shooter, but he's had practices. That's the, the main thing. He practiced every day, so uh, Woody, Woody was not able to. He was in a, so Woody was in a longer quarantine period than Rob? No, he was in isolation, so he didn't practice at all. Yeah, he's played, he played well on defense, he played well on offense, and he really picked us up. He was the difference. He gave us a chance. Without Robert, uh, we wouldn't have had a chance. They would have beaten us early. Um, he, he was the difference in the second half. He kept us in the game. I think Allen really gets frustrated out there. He tries to do too much dribbling first half he's trying to dribble the ball up the court and uh, just get the ball to the guard and get down the court and uh, you know defensively Allen is uh, trying to figure out he gave up baseline about 10 or 15 times and normally in the course of a year a forward will give it up two times so he's got to get better on defense and uh, as, a, as a team you know we have to get better. All right, the NFL playoffs are here. Joe, the NCAA basketball season's in full effect. You figure mm-hmm. they got to finish it this year. It must be finished, right? You can't start it again and then just have it sizzle out like it did last year. I don't think that can happen. So what should you do if you can't get to a game? You guys know the answer. Bet Online is the title sponsor for the Cuse Militia and for Armchair Media and Tie Thoughts. So head over there, sign up, get in on all the action you can over there. Bet Online, they're going the extra mile to make sure you can get in on everything imaginable this season, from game spreads and totals to team, player, and coach and props. Bet Online gives you more options to wager than any other place online. Head to Bet Online today. Use the promo code Armchair to take advantage of all of the great sign up bonuses. Bet Online, your online sportsbook experts. Thank you. Bet Online. Bet Online.net. No longer at the AG. Bet Online.net. So head over there, sign up today, and have a little fun with it. That's what I've been doing. You know, Joe, 
It's been, um, this is my, uh, for Seven everybody, no one knows, we didn't talk about it in last show, but, um, and, and quite frankly, I forgot, but uh, I've been in quarantine, I'm in quarantine, and it's terrible, I've been trying to work from home, the whole family tested positive, and I haven't had a beer, I haven't had a beer in two weeks, two weeks, hmm. so I didn't have a beer in the last, the last episode, the last show, I mean, I can't remember the last time. I didn't have a beer, Joe. So I think I'm going to. I think I'm going to. I feel great. Well. Luckily, nice. luckily, minor symptoms, nothing. Nothing major. Worst part was probably by the way, uh, Q's water boy obsessed with these these COVID tests. The dude does them like every day. So I think he's like I think he's like thirty something, low thirties in O against the COVID test. And here I am. <laughs> Oh and one, oh and one against the COVID test, and mm. um, <laughs> I couldn't imagine going there every day for this. I don't know what they do to him, but they take this little swab thing, and you think it's a Q-tip swab. I'm like Joe, have you had one yet? No, you haven't. Okay, so they take no. this little thing. It looks like a Q-tip swab, but you get it gets real close to you. You realize that is not a Q-tip swab. It's like bristly. And then they, that, but the woman that I had, she just shoves it up my nose and counts down from 10. And I'm like, oh my gosh. And she gets done with one nostril. And then she just shoves it in the other one. I'm not expecting it. They didn't tell me they're doing two nostrils. Like, don't you think one's enough? You count it down from 10. What's up? Why are you doing two? So anyways, they do two. But <laughs> luckily for me, I can honestly say that, that and being, not being able to go to anywhere is the worst part. And if that's all I have to complain about, then I'm blessed. Mm-hmm. By golly, it, so be it. So, anyways. All right. Where was I? Thanks, Ben Online. Let's put that away. The same read I've had for six months. I don't know. The good... Bobby B gave his uh, the Orange a fighting chance, if, as you heard Coach talk about. Keeping, um, keeping their lead... Well, trying to keep their lead the best he could for the uh, best 20 minutes he's ever played in an orange uniform. He started off four for four from the outside. He finished with 12 points, four for seven from the field. Alan Griffin, game high 15 points. I'm not trying to be negative, but that's pretty much all I've got for the good. Uh, The bad look, it was mostly ugly, but I started this shtick, so I'll play along. Sadibi out for precautionary measures. You heard Coach. He was a little sore. Couldn't go. Could have used him, obviously. Uh, Syracuse only missed one free throw. That's good, but they only took five. The Orange refused to drive the ball in the lane, continued to take poor shots. Coach was telling them, uh, you could see him telling them to drive the ball. I mean, I think I heard it. I read his lips one time. Uh, They're going to have to get to the line to win games. 26 times against uh, Northeastern and 42 times against Buffalo getting to the line. Both were very close games. Both were wins. Uh, Syracuse also slipped to 38th in the Ken Palm rankings. I think when we were last here, they were 29th. So all of that's bad. The ugly. Okay. Q foul trouble early for Gary A. And he gets two shots off in 17 minutes. Five rebounds and three points. Uh, Never got to the line. Our two starting guards combined for six for 23 from the field, 16 points. Joe Girard, two for eight from three. Buddy, two for 10 from three. Neither one of them got to the line. Kadari Richmond, 0 for three from behind the arc. One for two from the line. Syracuse as a team from distance was 12 for 38, 31.6%, and they were crushed on the boards 49 to 33, according to Ken Palm. All of that's ugly, just ugly. I mean, that's your game right there. So, Joe, instead of an ugly win, we get an ugly loss. Uh, Syracuse didn't adapt to Pitt when they were chipping away at the lead. They just kept taking bad shots, and I really don't know what else to say. Just kind of a collapse, man. I mean... After an 18-point yeah. lead in feeling really comfortable watching the end towards the end of that game, you just kind of had that feeling, right? It was, uh, it was just funeral bells. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, to me, I, we just needed to hit that one extra shot, right? I and mean, it just be, be – Yeah. The game started out so well, and when they were playing unselfish ball and trying to get the, the ball in open spots, that's when they – yeah, we're good. And even when second half, Q second half, where they're trying to get the ball to the hot hand, um, it was it was good. And in between all that, 
it was a lot of just not driving, um, not hitting the jumpers, settling for bad shots and outside jumpers. And I mean, did exactly what we hadn't done in the past against some of these other teams. And mind you, they're mid-major and, and coach kind of hit on that because of the size and physicality. Uh, you can do what Gary A and some of these guys have been doing down low and winning the rebound battle against the Northeasterns and the Buffaloes of the world. But once you get the league play, there's going to be, you know, bigger, faster, stronger guys. And uh, I think that's basically what you saw. I mean, you saw a team out there that just basically gutted, gutted out a win based off of tough defense and physicality and us just hurting ourselves too. So, I mean, there's a combination of both, uh, but um, you're not going to win a lot of games giving up 20 offensive rebounds, losing the rebound battle 49 to 33. Um, you're not going to win a lot of those games. So, uh, no, yeah, the second just, chance point. In, in this game, we were because Pitt shot six for 28 in the first half and they couldn't hit the broad side of a barn. And it looked like they just didn't have the players. And then they came out in the second half and they started hitting. So, um, it's a tough one. I know that we came into it not really expecting much, but when I saw who was missing from Pittsburgh, I figured we should be able to eke this one out, you know, even if we don't really have that great of a game. But I don't know, man. That's tough. It was tough. really, really tough. It was tough. And, and, the, and the thing that I see, too, is, you know, when you look at, like, the turnovers, right? Pitt had 16 turnovers. We had 13. Um, you can't, obviously, the 20 offensive rebounds to our nine offensive rebounds, that's second chance points and, and you know, multiple possess, possessions. Um, <clears throat> but, you know, we had – Pitt, Pittsburgh had 16 turnovers, but we had 12 steals. So some of that's <laughs> Pittsburgh. Some of that's good defense, right? Yeah. But 12 of the 16 turnovers, they were steals, right? Mm -hmm. We had 13 turnovers. Pittsburgh only had three steals, zero blocks. So – Which tells poor, me poor that we had handling. 10 turnovers where Pittsburgh really didn't have anything to do with it. It was just us mm -hmm. making a bad mistake. So – you know, well, whether it was a inbound pass at the end of the game, it was just yeah, it was tough, and mistake. it's just a lot of the basic stuff. Um, we I didn't think, take advantage. We didn't take advantage of our offensive possessions. No, they well, they melted so, down e too. I mean, you're right, but they melted down too. I mean, there was a couple shots. Oh, gosh, we're gonna get into it, but I'm just like, why, dude? When my wife says, "Don't make any funny shots with the ball, Joe." Talking about Joe Girard. Like, my yeah. wife's not exactly... Yeah, she wasn't talking to me. <laughs> no. Well, no. But my wife's not exactly the an analysis at all. Like, to any extent. And when she says, don't make any funny shots, Joe, that tells me something. That Yeah. Oh, yeah. 100%. That, that my wife notices this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so... He, we've got to get like well, we got to control like he's got to control that those those knee jerk long threes from like 35 40 feet i mean 35 yeah. 38 feet realistically it's about where and, some of them are and, and quincy took himself out of the game too uh they were playing all oh, everyone was pretty much playing perimeter except for mark and when we play those uber physical teams, like we're going to have problems when we don't have Sidibe. I, I think this is just a huge, you know, we talked about what's the starting lineup going to be and what's this and that. But, I mean, we were getting killed on the boards like that. And not at one point did he think about putting in John Bolzak or uh, Jesse Edwards. No, and he I said know, that Anselm and Sidibe weren't available. So, I mean, we need to get some type of something there in games like this, where this is going on, we need to be able to, to bring in a true center and have Mark and Quincy on the side so that we can just lay this offensive rebound stuff to rest. Yeah. Because Quincy, obviously, you know, he was averaging a double, double coming into this game. And I know, like you said, you know, it's a little different come league play, come conference play. But yeah. I mean, at the end of the day, that gives, he gives us our best chance. And, you know, for him to be, him, if he's got to be the guy all the time without any help, and you got Mark down low, that's he's going to put himself in a bad spot. He's going to do right. it. I mean, he's just he's just. Playing. And again, it's an offense that's it's still. Again, you don't want to get too far into the because they haven't had. There's been all these different type of quarantines and all this. They haven't had steady practice, so 
that obviously messes with the continuity and with your lineup and with trying to figure stuff out. Right. But, um, coach is going to have to figure this out. And there's a lot of people out there that are going to say that this game was on coach. Um, yeah, I think some of that's fair. I, I didn't bring it up because I want it was you, you brought it up yesterday when we talked on the phone. So I mean, you might as well just go ahead with it. It's well, as far as there's going to have to be times where he's just going to have to put in the hot hands. He's going to have to like I listened to his press conference and he talked about how Braswell this, Braswell that. Well, if that's the case and he was doing everything right, then how come he's not in the game at the end, right? And I, I know that everyone's going to question, you know the calls and this and that. But I mean, even when it comes down to the end game portion, you know, that, you know, that Kadari Richmond is the, the the best defensive player on your, the top of your zone. Like if you know that you still have time to get a rebound, call a timeout, then I don't know why we're not putting in the best defense and rebounding team that we could possibly put in for that possession to get the ball back. And then on the timeout, you can put and put it in for offense. Right. I mean, teams in the NBA and in college, they do this all the time. Um, substitute us offense for defense at the end of games and with the team that we have i think that you're gonna he's gonna have to he's gonna have to be able to make those tough decisions on whether joe's gonna finish the game whether buddy's gonna finish the game um and who's gonna be in there and playing and he's gonna have to be willing to put in the players needed against the type of matchups that we're that we're going against and i just think that you you saw it falling apart with the uh, offensive rebounds and, and i think we needed to do something yeah. Um, so there are going to be people that do blame it on coach. I don't necessarily blame this one on coach. I think a lot of it is effort. I think Quincy got a, a couple of bogus calls, but um, effort. And I kind of think, again, the offense uh, at times they look so unselfish. And then at other times it's like it looks like guys trying to get it in like three guys out there trying to be the man, trying to get their points, trying to get their shots up. Yeah. And like this isn't PlayStation. Right. So, uh, again, when you have a situation where you have someone like Quincy who's doing what he's doing and then you have these other guys that can shoot the three, like, I don't know why we're not running our offense through a Quincy or somebody else. Um, And, like, I know Griffin, he took 16 shots, but um, it's got to be spread out and they got to be able to move the ball like they did the first, what, six, seven, eight minutes of the game. Yeah. And their offenses look beautiful. They have so many guys that can hit shots. It's like it was like. 10 minutes or eight minutes left in the first half. And we already had five different players who hit a three. Like we have that type of, of, um, you know, just different players in different positions. that can score a whole bunch of different ways. It's just putting it together and figuring out and along the way, figuring out who's going to, who's going to carry it on defense. I mean, it's going to come to a point where, if you know, rebound or you don't play defense. I don't care how many times, how many points you can score. Cause we have players that can score in multiple different ways. So, we just got to get figured out, and I, I, I obviously, I think, I think we will. I think we've seen this in in years past, and with a lot of other different teams, like you start off slow sometimes, and you know, you just get better as the season goes on. And every once in a while, you got a little slip up, but then you just learn from it. So, Syracuse looked like the ready team in the first half, and Pittsburgh came out, and they just were physical with them, and Syracuse didn't do what they had to do to. Uh, to get it done because they've done them. They've done it against Buffalo and Northeastern. How many times did we go to the uh, to free throw line? How many times did we drive and, and drive and over 60 fouls? times between the two teams? Right. Well, and that's what I said. How many we free throws did we put? Five, yeah, so. five. Did you not listen to my good, bad, and the ugly? By the way, uh, I, I never, I, I never thought he was going to stop folks. I didn't think he was going to stop. He went longer than the coach montage all by himself, which is good, which <laughs> I should, when I don't look so serious, bro, will you loosen up? Golly, I was hoping to get some fan feedback in, but I'm sorry, guys. Joe just took all your time. Oh, stop it. All right. You guys know what to do. It's time to hear from you. The loud mouths from the loud house. When I... When I... When the game ends, I'll post on social media your thoughts on the game. You give them to me, and we'll talk about them. First, we're going to talk about Bet Online one more time. Look, football playoffs are here for the NFL. Can can Buffalo can Buffalo make it to the Super Bowl again? Can they do it? Can they win a home playoff game for the first time since what 1995? I don't know. But if you think they can or can't, it doesn't matter. 
because you can go to Bet Online and make that bet. Bet Online is going the extra mile to make sure you can get in on everything imaginable this season from game spreads and totals to team, player, and coaching props. Bet Online gives you more options to wager than any other place online. Head over to Bet Online today. Use the promo code ARMCHAIR to take advantage of all of the great sign up bonuses. Bet Online, your online sportsbook experts. Thank you, Bet Online. Okay. It is time. Wrong slide. Okay, so, Joe, mm. let's start with Twitter. By the way, sorry, guys. Only time I'm going on Twitter is if there's a game. I, I find no, nothing productive or well-intentioned on Twitter unless mm-hmm. there's a game. I can't do it. Anyway. At ZW Rodburn, it's always disappointing to lose, but I think this game highlights some of the shortcomings on this team. Kadari struggles from deep, so you don't have to, so you don't have to extend. Quincy is only the only reliable rebounder. The two three is still a work in progress, and this team makes poor choices. Uh, yeah, well, Kadari's best first of all on defense. I mean, again, only credited with two steals, but Joe, like we discussed last night after the game. I mean, how many did he cause? He had his fingers on a couple of them. I mean, right. deflections and just cause just being a rabble rouser. And right. he's got it. He's one of the guys I'm talking about. He's got to do a better job of getting to the line. He's got to drive. Dude, coach is yelling at him, drive. Drive the ball. Yeah. I know. I know. Yeah. It's difficult, too, because a lot of times they give you that open shot and you just want to take I it. I know. Because you're thinking open shot. But the reason they're keeping you open is because they know you're not a legitimate threat out there. So. Yeah. Uh, and again, it's tough too to drive because that's what the defense is basically forcing you to do, and they're ready for it. So, I mean, you saw that on that one drive that he drove and left his feet and passed it out to Braswell, and it would have been, I think, the first or second three that he would have hit. But um, they called the charge because he left his feet, and the defensive player was in position, and that was because they were baiting him to do it. So, um, he is better, obviously, when he drives and kicks and finds the open man. Uh, you just got to learn how to deal with the defenses that kind of play back on him because they're doing it for a reason. And you could read Beheim's lips and heard him a couple different times. He was talking about Kadari don't shoot, drive. Mm-hmm. So um, they can't do that because he's that's if he's going to take those shots and he's not going to learn how to beat that, then it's going to eat into his minutes because he, he's young as an he'll offense, get it as an offensive liability. Mm-hmm. You can't have it. If you're no, just going to sit in the three-point line, not do anything, then you're allowing the other team to basically play five on four. Right, and that's what that's what uh, that's what Quincy got got in trouble for against Rutgers. And, and, and was it Rutgers? I think it was. Yeah. Uh, when when he was just uh, did I say Quincy? Alan Griffin. Yeah. I'm sorry, Griffin. So Griffin did against Rutgers when he was just standing on the line waiting for an open shot, and he wasn't doing anything to. Really, yeah, but he can regardless. shoot the three. That's, I understand that's that, but you still don't strength. post up there. You still got to. Well, you, right, but a, usually a three point shooter is going to be getting guarded. Like Kadari Richmond, there. If he's sitting at the three point line, you got basically man to man on all the other four players, and you got basically a floater that can go around and double team whoever the hell he wants. Um, so. Quincy's the only reliable rebounder. Well, right now, I mean, you got Mark. Mark's not. Mark hadn't been too too bad. Um, he's just out of position. You know, he does yeah, the best just, he can, he, man. Yeah, I think he, I think he really does. Six rebounds. It's not terrible. I mean, he at least stayed clean and got to play all forty minutes, if I'm not mistaken. And he had more mm-hmm. rebounds than Quincy. And Quincy had five rebounds in seventeen minutes. It's just he's got, he's got to stay in there. And this isn't a problem that we've seen this year with Quincy. So, um, well, ever. Yeah, and, and they'll get it fixed. But the big key is is getting Sadibi back, getting him healthy, and getting him back in the game. So. Yeah. At Ebola underscore zero or O, uh, that's on Bayheim. What an absolute terrible job of coaching and control of the offense. Just an utter collapse. I mean, there's going to be yeah. some legitimacy to it. I think you know. Um, you mentioned no. there's there's a, there's there. Well, no, I mean a little bit. Sure, yeah. I don't think oh, it was of good. Of course, but this is again one of those things where. You know, more than one thing can be true. But there's a multitude of things that happened for this to, to be this way. And a lot of oh, it's on the players. Coach was trying to coach, and they were not listening to coach. So, yeah, I mean, I mean, 
<laughs> you, I mean, the, like, again, you don't even know what happened. I mean, as soon as they got out of that timeout from the jump of that inbounds play, I mean, it didn't look like they knew what was going on. So. No, they looked freaking, they looked terrible. You knew when he couldn't inbound that ball, it was not going to be good. So uh, it just looked like going out to the floor. They didn't even, they just went over the play and then they're out on the floor and it was like, oh, where are we going? Where am I supposed to be? Like, it just looked like a little discombobulated. So, again, that'll just come with repetition, but uh, there's more than one thing or reason why we didn't win this game. Um, and usually that's how it is. And even in wins, there's a lot of negatives sometimes, but it's because of that one positive, it got you through it. So um, at, I, I knew coach was going to say that so someone was going to blame it on coach. So, well, there's a couple of them uh, at Les Mitchell, embarrassing, shorthanded, mediocre at best pit team and you lose. Wow. Uh, got uh, at Eric one Hanson. That one's uh, coach owns that one. Um, Bill's Mafia member. Bayheim had no offense. It's just pathetic down the stretch. Um, just a couple more. Effing embarrassing. Blah, blah, blah. Uh, Facebook. Joe. Awful defensive rebounding. Too many second chance points allowed. Poor second half shooting. Give Braswell more run. Finally, Braswell has a game worth talking about. <laughs> we, 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 we don't, we, we kid because we care. But we do we do get on Braswell a little bit because he was 0 for 12 from three coming into this game. Dude's labeled as a sharp sharpshooter. Comes in, hits his first four, bing, 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 all from the same spot. And um, you know, you can see you see what he can what he can do. And Joe P, big Braswell fan. So by the way, top fan. <laughs> Joe P. Uh, oh, you got it back? Yeah, he did. I just noticed. Yeah, it. good for him. Yeah, I just noticed. Yeah, it. didn't he score like the, the same amount or just there are more he scored points. is he had 12 points coming into that game he scored 12 points yeah so he doubled his total in one game hmm okay yeah the right. second chance well, points i think at one point on um on it was 20 rebounds and 18 second chance points to like nine rebounds and three second chance points or something like that it yeah. was really it was really lopsided it was terrible jesse top fan jesse I'm getting tired of using my comment to talk about Joe every game, but here we go again. In both losses, Joe shot 1 for 8 and 3 for 11, respectively. That's 12% and 27%. In close games, i.e. Bryant and Buffalo, he shot 2 for 14, 1 for 6. That's 14% and 16%. Uh, when, he's not sh when he's not shooting well, he absolutely kills us. Uh, he goes on. He's got some examples in there, and it's very well done, but he, it's right. When Joe... I hate to say this. I'm not jumping on any bandwagons and I'm not trying to I'm not trying to get on Joe. But if Joe ain't scoring, get your face out of the camera. You're scaring me. If Joe's not scoring, he's not doing much. You know, there was a game, I think it could have been Bryant, where he had like six steals or something like that. And he didn't but but he, so he was scoring too. He like had an all around great game. But if you're right. not gonna be scoring, you gotta do something else on defense. Joe is not great on defense. I he's mean, he, he's sneaky and can get some steals, but overall, like I said, I mean, you have someone on the bench <clears throat> that is is better on that? defense. And when Joe isn't scoring, uh, then kadari has got to be in there, and we got to be able to make the switch. It's just tough because, again, a lot of times coach goes by what's going on in practice. You know, when you're practicing, you can really only go by what you're seeing, what they do in practice. If they turn around and they just practice. have a, a crap game. Practice then that makes it difficult, right? Because yeah. it's difficult. I mean, imagine if you were a coach and you're practicing and you have this person just killing it. And then it gets to a game and you're like, all right, I'm going to play that guy. And then he shoots bad. Then what do you do? Then you go back to practice. and he's. I mean, nobody knows what he's doing in practice. But, I mean, if he's shooting in practice the way that he's shooting in the game, then I just I just can't see how Beheim would be able to start him. So I just can't see that being, being the – what's going on, you know? So that's, that's always a tough situation when you're a coach. So, but you got to be able to, to see it and read it early and, and make the right, you know, choice. And it's one of those things where I wonder if Kadari was actually having an all right game and not just shooting random jumpers because they were leaving them open. Like if, if maybe Joe wasn't even out there, like what would those last five minutes look like if it was Kadari out there and not Joe? Well, yeah, we will never know. And that's the big question mark. You know, you lose a game by three points. 
and maybe you have the wrong personnel in. I don't know. Torian, Facebook. Couldn't inbound, inbound the ball with five seconds led. Did coach did coach left? Yeah, easy. Let me let me just look. Well, let's start that over. Why not? Yeah, let's do that. Torian on Facebook couldn't inbound the ball with five seconds left. Did coach even draw up a play? Good win for Pitt. Outplayed, outworked, outcoached. Mm, mm, that is a dagger, Torian. Mm. Um, look, Pitt hustled, man. On that inbounds pass, they were just better. I don't know the whole second half. You I, saw it. I, I mean, know, but that was the play. Just a, that was the play. The, well, yes, that was the play. And of course he drew up a play. And like I said, yeah. when you, you saw him come, come out of the timeout, you were like, it just looked like a couple of people were puzzled about it. And then there was only two people involved. And while we're about to get a five second violation, I just watched Quincy and Joe just standing there, not doing anything. So, um, they just, you gotta be able to know when, the play's not going to work, and there's that second-level bug-out plan where you just got to run toward the ball and get open. And two out of the four players that were on the floor seemed uninterested else. in that. So yeah, it's just it was a basically it was to me it was a a will it was a want it was a I'm going to go out and I'm going to play and they played harder and physical and they wanted to win more. Yeah, they Jeff probably Jeff probably felt embarrassed and from the first half and they came out and and they they hit us in the mouth and we really struggled to basically keep the lead from, I mean, think about it. We were up 11 with what? Eight minutes to go. Eight with five minutes well, to go. We were up 14 with what? Like wasn't that much time right. left, maybe five minutes, six minutes left. Yeah. I mean, they came out in the, the second half and they hit a couple shots. They got it close. And I was like, here we go. And then Braswell hit those shots, got the lead back up again. I'm like, all right. Then we were up 11 with eight minutes to go. I'm like, okay. We're up eight with five minutes to go. I'm like, oh, we're just going to need to hit a couple shots. Little did I know we were only going to hit one two-point shot or one three-point shot in the last five <laughs> minutes. So Robert, you can't have those guys shooting like that. Yeah, well, obviously. Uh, <clears throat> yes. Great observation, Joe. <laughs> I didn't mean to. I didn't, I'm sorry. Thanks. <laughs> I mean, Richard. Richard Cranium. Um <clears throat> Top fan, Robert. I have no words for what I just watched. Still can't wrap my head around it. I mean, I'm sitting on the couch and my wife's like, do you not even care? I'm like, I'm just numb. I'm just so pissed. Like, why? Why bother using my energy to be pissed? I don't know. Yeah. Uh, Right? (laughs) Nate, I don't care what you say. Not being in a real game situation for 18 days hurts. And we saw how badly it hurt today. Well, that's, that's quite possible. So... Anyways, I mean, do you think do you think that so you listen to the commentators, right? And Mm. I mean, did you think that that had something to do with like the reaction of everything? I mean, if you remember, like the first like 10 minutes, they were basically just all of just pumping Syracuse up and talking about how this is like, you know, a weak Pittsburgh and we can't judge this Pittsburgh team because of this, this and that. So I feel like. There was a situation where we played and we got the lead and you have the announcers talking like, oh, well, you know, Syracuse is a really good team and Pittsburgh, they had missing this guy and this guy and this guy. And then all of a sudden the tides turn. I mean, do you think that has something to do with it? What, the broadcaster you, curse? No, the, I'm just saying not them. The, uh, oh, oh, not them oh, saying that we're losing, the, but because of like the harsh fan feedback, like would the fee, fan feedback been as harsh if it was close the whole time and the announcers didn't talk like it was about to be a blowout. Oh, I don't, you know, I mean, that's, that's something that just never crossed my mind because it's, I just, but I don't know. I really don't. That's a tough Cause call. that's what made me nervous. It wasn't even like a curse type thing, but I'm the way they were talking. I'm like, Dude, we're 10 minutes in. I mean, yeah, I know it's I don't 11, even, nothing. I got to be honest. I don't pay attention to them. Really? Yeah. Okay. Not much. Right. Not, not I just, much. I mean, I like to listen. Do you? I mean, mm. if the look, put it this way, it is a whole lot easier for me this year to not listen to broadcasters without crowd without a crowd there anyway. If there's a crowd there, like I feed off the crowd if I watch it at home. Oh, that's another question. If the crowd's there, do we if lose the that? crowd's there, we probably do not lose that game. That's what I was thinking. Think I, about. I just don't what think that so. crowd would be like. After in, Braswell hit four in a row. Yeah, I mean, dude, seriously, can you imagine? It's that's that. that I mean, you is, saw the bench. Yeah, and you can hear him. Yeah, 
the bench right. that wraps around the whole freaking one side of the gym. Well, I mean, they got enough room. There's <laughs> yeah, no true. cheerleaders. True. Um, yeah, I don't think we lose that game if the crowd's there. You know, we watched a whole season of, of NCAA football, and, you know, it didn't really affect me personally watching the game that much. Um, well. ju- ju- I mean, no, well, you watch the game because you can right. feel the energy from a crowd through yeah. the TV and mm-hmm. never really... Well, um, no, I did think I, I've thought about that a lot. You know, you get you I've get thought about it a little, but it's more effective in basketball. But I've thought so about like. it. It is way more effective in basketball. It's a way more intimate setting. Everything's closer. Things people are louder in the dome. It's totally different. Everybody's packed in there, and um, you got you know you're corned off what from the end zone to like the twenty yard line, thirty yard line, or something with no, the court. No, it's a big enough game. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, you know. Just in general, the crowd noise has been missed for for basketball. I just – it sucks. I mean, think about how many times you've been watching a game, and especially for Joe and I, because we don't get to go to a lot of home games, obviously. Mm, right. You know, or yeah, just or, think or about games, being or, – I mean. or, or think about being at the game and, you know um, – how you feed off of each other at games. I mean, I've definitely been at games where, I mean, you feed off of the people around you and it's just, you're screaming at the top of your lungs. Like people watching, oh, yeah. people watching yep. on TV, they feel that dude. You get, I can get chills from the crowd sometimes. Mm-hmm. So I can't imagine what it does to the players. A lot of players be like, Oh, well, you know, I just come in there and play the game, man. I, I believe you a little bit, but when that crowd's going, man, uh, there he is. That has got a whole nother level. Especially basketball. Yes, a whole nother level, bro. And uh, you can't, you can't even begin to factor that in to that game. That game might not ever get close if there's a crowd there. Maybe a little bit in the second half, but like you said, Robert Braswell starts hitting those threes in front of our crowd. Bobby B. After they just came and storming and came back. back. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-mm. Storm back with a fourteen. I don't know, Mm-mm. man. That Couple crowd beers be and going nuts. <laughs> yes, yes. They're calling timeouts. They're burning their timeouts way quicker than they needed to, especially in the first half. You know <sighs> that crowd's off the chain. If if there's if it's full, if it's I don't give a crap. There's seventeen, fifteen thousand people. And that's what's, in it. and that's the crazy thing about it is that you just never know. I mean, especially, I mean, basketball, you never really know anyway, the the way the ball bounces and everything, but you just never know how much, how much certain things affect the games. No, I guess we will never know. No, I guess we won't, but you know, it will be nice. Speaking of crowds in the dome, I want to get to your 2021 predictions. We've got plenty of time, but we, we don't have time today, unfortunately. So I will, I will uh, table those. Shelf them, if you will, and we will try to get to those whenever we have time. We'll get to them. So I've got them. They're not going anywhere. Syracuse with a mm-hmm. chance to right the wrongs against Pitt with the fans as Georgetown visits the Dome. Uh, the all-time series with the Orange and Georgetown sits at 51-44 to in favor of Syracuse. The Orange fell to Ewing in his Hoyas last year, 89-79. Uh, to Gerard, Beheim, Sidibe, Dolzai, and Hughes, your starting lineup. Beheim with 25 points and Hughes with 21 points, according to orangehoops.org. Syracuse is 2-1 and one so far in the Ewing era. The Hoyas are 160 in the net rankings and they are ranked 108th by Ken Palm. Senior guard Javon Blair leads his team averaging 18 points a game and shooting 33.7 from three. 6'11 sophomore center Quadis Wahab is averaging 12 rebounds a game, and as a team, they're shooting 35.5% from distance. So, Joe, I will say this with with caution because of Pitt, but Georgetown (laughs) is... (laughs) Georgetown's kind of dookie, man. But but you know, a healthy Sadibi would be a Christmas gift that I hadn't gotten yet. And it would be huge for Syracuse in this game. Like I said, Quadis uh Wahab, he is six eleven and I think he's pretty heavy too. Two thirty, two forty. Yeah. Um, we recruited him. He picked Georgetown over us. Yeah, I remember that talking about that. That's right. Yeah. That sucks. Yeah, it's uh I've been looking at, I haven't seen them play this year, but obviously uh, three and seven, one and five in the conference, um, not too great. And um, 
I don't know if you remember last year, the past couple of years or whatever, but um, one of their better players, Mac McClung, mm-hmm. he uh, transferred this past year mm-hmm. out to Texas Tech. So I know we don't have to worry about him. So, I mean, we got, uh, like you 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 mentioned Blair. Uh, Jamarco Pickett is uh, another guy, 6'9 forward, um, that is one of the main returning starters. Uh, but this is a team, uh, when I read it, read up on it uh brought in five freshmen and three graduate transfers so uh you take away Pickett, wahab and blair and everybody else on the team is new so um yeah they're just still trying to figure it out in the past couple once they got into the big east play i'm looking at their box score and for the most part i mean it's, it really looks like they only go five deep i mean 10 people play but you're talking four minutes four minutes one minute seven minutes so uh they got one guy uh uh, <clears throat> forward um, Bile that comes off the bench. Uh, he's six nine, graduate transfer from Northwestern State. He played in the teens, low teens minutes the last couple of games in Georgetown. But everyone else is pretty much, as far as starters, uh, is in the thirty minutes. Um, the other remaining starters that join the three that we talked about, Donald Carey. He is a uh, graduate transfer from Siena. And um, Dante Harris is a six foot, 170 pound freshman um, that starts as well. So that's really what you're looking at is five deep with the four that comes off the bench. They start three guards um, uh, minus Wahab. They really don't have that that size. And but again, Wahab could be a problem, like you said, if Sidibe doesn't play. So uh, overall, again. Um, not the greatest Georgetown team that's been fielded by Patrick Ewing Jr., but um, they do have some guys that can make some shots. They got a guy that's got some. They're he okay. can post they're... post some problems down low if if Sidibe isn't back. Um, but they're not deep, and um, you know they play three guard sets in which you know it's going to be some mismatches as far as height when it comes to Buddy and Alan, Alan Griffin, and they're going to have to pick one or the other for the most part. I just hope that. <clears throat> with the pit game and the practices before and the practices between that, first of all, I think that's, you know, Sid- Sidibe practiced, okay? And mm-hmm. I don't know how much PT or anything he did before he started practicing. I'm sure there was something, but obviously when you get on the court and you're practicing and you're, and you're, and you're coming up and down the court and things like that, that's where his soreness probably came in, and you know you got to hope that he's just going to be ready. I don't know how confident I am in it, seeing that you know I don't I didn't even see him on the on the bench, so I don't, yeah. I don't know. I really don't like w- w- sore. Okay, well I don't know really what that means. So well, you have to understand. I mean, he had a knee injury, so he couldn't really um, put in a lot of cardio. Uh, you can do your therapy and physical therapy and right. all that stuff. Yep, but the but, stamina um, thing is uh, – plus his stamina not exactly right. the best. And anyway. you, know, you never know when you can't get your cardio in. Sometimes you put on a little bit of weight, and you put on a little bit of weight in the off season to begin with. So, I mean, I brought that up, and you hope that's not the case. But he got out there. He's probably been running, and because of his cardio and the fact that it is uh, you know, kind of a fresh surgery, um, there's probably going to be some soreness, and we know his history with knees, so we knew this wasn't going to be a walk in the park, right? Um, so I, I hope he comes back, and he's got to make his way back um, if we want to be the type of team we think we can be because that right now is really what's hurting us. Yeah, we got to remember, too, we haven't seen – Sadibi played four minutes this, this season. I'm not telling you guys anything, but I'm just saying – we don't know what this team even looks like yet. Joe talked yeah. about Joe talked about the um, you know getting the cohesion and 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 getting you know acclimated to playing together and things. And we haven't even had our starting center, but for four minutes this year. <laughs> so yeah. we don't even know what the team looks like yet. Let's be honest. But yeah. um, and I hope this injury doesn't hurt Sidibe's confidence as well. Uh, I, as we've seen, I, yeah, I know. Yeah, you know, last year it he finally got his confidence and you saw what he was doing and it just kind of sucks sometimes because when you get that, you get confidence and all of a sudden that injury happens and it takes, sometimes it takes a little while and it gets in people's heads, um, about, you know, getting over injuries and stuff like that. I yeah. mean, hell, I mean, I played basketball with your brother in CYO and when he messed up his ankle, there was it. he was never the same. Yeah. Never the same basketball player. He was always worried about retweaking it and it getting worse. And, um, 
you know, he was pretty good, but sometimes that gets in people's heads. So, um, that takes a little bit of time to get to gain that confidence back in those those body parts when you get injuries like that. So, yep. So we will see. Um, obviously, if he plays, it's going to be it's going to be a, probably limited minutes. Yeah, it's probably going to be maybe he won't start. Maybe he comes in or maybe he starts and he goes out early. But to get a little bit of something will show us uh, show us that you know what he can do and 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 you know. Obviously, it's going to take time, and being that we're playing a kind of a um, a not so great Georgetown team, and being able oh. to, well, they're not, they're not. I mean, I get it, but look, I mean, after watching that Pittsburgh, I'm not, I don't want to go I, as far as calling the whole team soft, but dude, there's teams that come in and play physical and in your face, and I mean. It looked like we cowered. I know, but I'm just going by yesterday. what what is what I've researched and what I've seen from Georgetown. I get year. it, I get it. But Georgetown, uh, they've always had that type of mentality as well as Pittsburgh, as far as playing. Yeah, I know they have gritty and in your Pittsburgh's tongue. Pittsburgh's always and I, and been just, gritty though. Pittsburgh's and always I pulled been up gritty. with January sixth article. Washington Post. This is Georgetown lets another double digit lead slip away in a loss to Butler. Yeah. Which means that they've given up multiple double digit leads. Um and that sounds kind of similar to another team, right? I mean not multiple, well, it just happened to the us. One. <laughs> the, well, the, the one I mean, epic collapse we're coming out of quarantine where both teams we, both these teams are coming back from games where they gave up double digit leads. Okay. And lost. So Usually when that happens, there's a lot of motivation to get back on the, the W side. Okay. So, like I, I said, mean, we'll see. I don't want to sit here. We can sit here and find all the negatives. If you go back and listen to the Pittsburgh preview, I I made it sound like there's no way we should lose this game. There was no way we should have lost that game. We only scored six. They, they, only, they scored 60 points, 63 points. I mean, in all reality, if you told me Pittsburgh's going to score 63 points, looking at what we scored previous games heading into that. I mean, we're averaging in the 80s. Yeah, I would have said we were going to crush them. Mm -hmm. Especially with their best player out. But, I mean, think about if he played, guys. It wouldn't wouldn't have been close. The rebounds, we got out-rebounded by what, 13? We'd have been out-rebounded by 25. So... So, look, let it be a lesson. Sometimes teams rebound. Sometimes teams need a good, swift kick in the ass against mm-hmm. against a not so great team coming in their own house and beating up on them, and then they can yeah. go sulk in the locker room and fix it and come back out. This is like I said when I introduced Georgetown. This is a rebound game. This is a perfect opportunity for Syracuse against a mediocre Georgetown team. Is Syracuse mediocre? Maybe they are. I guess we'll find out. On Saturday night, when they play Georgetown. No, I mean right now that's not what the numbers say, right? That's not. So, then that's what I'm saying. That the data but you tells can lose me the mediocre teams. No, you obviously can. But let's see how yes. mediocre Georgetown is. 160 in the net in 108th by Ken Palm. So <laughs> we'll see what happens. We shall see. I remain optimistic. I'm not going to let one game sway me. Uh, no, like you know that much. I I was disappointed in what I saw against Pitt. When it was over, I said, you know what? We're good for one of these crappy losses every year. I hope I hope that that's the one. Let's put it behind us, learn from it, and yeah. go move on to Georgetown. And that's what you do. Yeah. And that's what college athletes do. So, so I feel like, too, almost every team in, the, in, in conference, they always lose a bad in-conference game for the most part, right? Duke almost lost to Boston College last night. They won by one freaking point. Louisville took out. Now, Louisville's probably not. They're not a bad Louisville's team. Louisville's 8-1. So. Yeah, I know. Mm-hmm. But, I mean, they're not ranked. Virginia Tech was ranked. Virginia Tech lost. They blew up. Talk about blowing a lead. They blew a lead, too. Yeah. No, I mean, I'm just excited to get back into the flow of just it's have, got, like, that's, regular. And that's it. That's the thing. They got to be in the flow. This is our last non-conference game. We talked about it in the last show. Hopefully going forward, this contact tracing stuff will pan out. The kids will be smart and will not have to go through a pause. Maybe people have to quarantine, but we maybe we don't have to go through the pause. We've been through three. I think that's – I hope that's – our our quota for the year. No, three for Buddy, two for the well, team. Well, true, that's right. Three for Buddy, two for the team. You're right. You're right. Yeah. Um, so. By the way, he he got slammed. What? Buddy did, got slammed in fan feedback. Did he? 
Did I miss well, it? Well, maybe not our fan feedback, but in some of the articles I read and some of the other websites, well, the you other Syracuse you, websites. Yeah, real real quick. Noons and stuff like that. You know, oh, okay. Got, Did they? Then, well, you know what? They the comments him. Uh, and rightfully so. And rightfully so. I mean, mm-hmm. he didn't do anything. Well, he was worse than Joe. We we talk a lot about uh, He's a below Joe, average Joe, D1 player. He oh, I don't, be playing in well, I don't, ACC, uh, like that kind of. Like from sports killed. journalists? No, Bloggers? not for sports. They were comments from fans behind them, you know, oh, uh, gotcha. computer. Okay. But well, I'm just saying. I, well, you're going to get that. You're going to get that. I used to just destroy Syracuse football. And then we started doing this podcast, and I realized what an absolute jackass I was. <laughs> <laughs> Some of the things I said come up in my Facebook memories, and I'm like, whoa, dude, calm down. Calm down. <laughs> so, so I get it. But uh, Buddy was worse than Joe yesterday, and I don't think I saw anything in our fan feedback about it. Maybe I missed it, or maybe I just didn't pull it up. But, um, you know. I don't know. It's tough to see. I mean, if you look at the stats, yes. But what did your eyes tell you? My eyes told me Joe. Because he right. takes worse shots. Cause he, he, cause, right. It's all about the timing and the shots, right? Yes. Buddy Buddy took a couple bad shots, but he missed a bunch of open ones. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah. And and Buddy, you know, um, well, he, he no, I was gonna I was gonna make a make a give him a solid, but I can't. His stat line's terrible. Three for twelve, <sighs> two for ten. I know. Uh, well, he sat a two, little while there for two the rebounds. Second half. Yeah, so. he did. He did, and rightfully so. So well, I mean, he, you know, and and coach is gonna have to figure it out, man. Think about it. You go as long as you have gone. Well, not as long as you've gone, but I mean, f- what three, four years of sanctions and dealing with having to deal with what going six, seven deep and figuring all that stuff out. And now he's got full scholarships and he's got uh, a lot of different options. And it's gonna take a little bit of time to probably readjust, especially considering that there's no consistency with our roster and when we're playing and getting consistency and, and co- cohesion in there in practice. So, um, my it's opinion, gotta be tough for the coaches too. My opinion, and we, and we may never see it, but in in you know, coach knows better than I do. But Joe has got to be on the hot seat. Man. I feel like he's got to be on the hot seat. But we will see. I hope he turns it around. I saw. I've seen one. I've seen one good game from Joe. Buddy, yeah. he came back from quarantine on fire. Now you got these guys stepping up. You got Robert Braswell coming in, scoring, going four for four, his first four for four, and and then hitting you know twelve points. Right. And um, you've well, seen I mean, what Kadari options. Richmond's been doing. And I don't care who starts, as long as you can either. make the adjustment and make the substitution because you have options. Yeah. It doesn't as long as if Sadibi's healthy. Then we have a roster that we haven't had in many, many years because we can pretty much match up with any type of team based upon, you know, who we have. We don't need to start CDB against small teams, but we do against big teams, right? Right. And depending on what the wings do or if there's a lot of three point shooters, are we going to have Joe and Buddy in there all the time in the top of the two, three zone, knowing that they're not the best two guards out there to close out to three point shooters? No, you got to like, have Richmond's got to be in there. Right. Yeah. So we just have to be able to make the adjustments and give the kids the chances to make mistakes, but but go out there and, and be a positive for the team against that matchup and that team that we're playing. We can't just stick with one. Boom, these are my five guys that are going to be in there the last five minutes because that's just not going to work this year. Yeah. Okay. Look, we'll try to squeeze in the 2021 predictions from you guys next episode. Go Qs. Fans, keep your heads up. Let's see what happens for, for Georgetown. If they, if, they totally, if they totally collapse again, then sound the alarms because Pitt and Georgetown, not great. And if we didn't learn anything from Pitt and we go into Georgetown, we have troubles. It's time to maybe get closer, a little bit closer to that panic button. So anyways, <laughs> uh, I appreciate all of you for coming on. Thanks to everybody who participated in fan feedback. Thank you so much. Uh, thanks for joining us today. We will see you again after Georgetown. Thank you, Bet Online. For Joe, I'm Sean. We're out. Peace.